when you have your opponent in your guard, he may give you straight arms, as here with the choke. At this point, you once again want to decide which arm you want to break. So I think Sergeant Miller's going to break the far side arm. You'll reach up and grasp that arm. If he's got a jacket, grasping it by the jacket. If not, grasping it by the elbow bumps. And you're going to take your other hand and with your palm out, reach underneath his leg. At this point, you want to relax your legs and bring them over you so that your center of gravity comes up. And then you want to pull with this arm to spin as Sergeant Miller has done here. Now the leg that comes around his head, you want to reach up and grab his head with, pulling him towards you. And after you've done that, bring the hand out from underneath his leg, secure a thumb grip on his wrist, and break his elbow with hip pressure. A straight arm bar from the guard can also be done as a drill by alternating sides. So for example, Sergeant Bach would execute the straight arm bar from the guard, but before he brings his arm out, he will simply let loose the head, rotate around to the guard, and then do it exactly the same to the opposite side. He can go back and forth now on this drill, making sure that he rotates his hips in 180 degrees for a straight arm bar from the guard drill. Once again, when your opponent is mounted on you and you're attempting to get him off by using the trap and roll technique, you will at this point have grabbed his arm. When you attempt to grab his leg, though, it doesn't take a rocket scientist for him to move the leg out of the way. Well, the good news is, when he moves it out, there's this hole right here that you're going to take advantage of. So the way you're going to do that is you're going to use your elbow to boost his knee up and bring your knee through. When your knee is through, you're going to place your weight on that same side foot and use that to turn your entire body to face the other direction. Once you've turned, you're going to skate this foot and put it over the enemy's foot just like this so that he can't just step over you. Now when you've escaped the first leg and turned over, at this point you'll still be holding on to the enemy's arm. So now you're going to let go of that arm and use both of your hands or elbows, whichever you can get in the way, to block the enemy from moving his knee towards you. You're going to now move your hip back and get your knee through this gap here. Once you've got that, the enemy will be pursuing you, so you're going to place your weight on this foot, turn over to face the other way again, escape your foot, and place the enemy within your guard. Now the key to this attack, or this escape, is called the shrimp move. Essentially, it breaks down like this. You're going to find yourself laying on one side, and you're going to bring your bottom leg up. Up meaning trying to get it as close to your head as you can. After you've done that, you're going to put your weight on this foot and turn over so that your whole body, hips, shoulders, and everything turns. When you've done that, you're going to post on this foot, and using your shoulder as the pivot point, and this leg as the driver, you're going to move your, just your butt back, just like this, into this shrimp-like position. When you're attempting the straight arm bar from the guard, first you secured his arm, placed your arm underneath his leg, and spun around. At this point, if your opponent should tuck his head, you're not going to be able to grasp him with this leg. So what you want to do now is this. First, you want to pull your head as close to this leg as you can. Then you want to take your leg that you were attempting to grab his head with and swing it in the direction his head is pointing to get some momentum. You're going to point this heel and you're going to push the opponent towards his head. And at the same time, sweep your leg back out of the way so you roll up over your thigh. When your opponent is attempting to pass your guard, after he pins the biceps, he'll post one of his legs up. And when he does so, you have an opportunity to take him over once again. So at this point, you're going to relax your legs and hang on the calf of your leg that's on his posted leg. And you're going to post on your opposite side shoulder. Dig this hand goes underneath his arm towards his collar. And swinging on this leg and that shoulder, you're going to move your butt out from underneath him. At that point, this leg will come inside just like a belt here. Just like a belt here with your foot hooking on his hip. Okay. <clears throat> 
his weight will be on your bicep there. So you're going to change your pivot to now pivot on your hip, move your torso back this direction, and with a scissor motion of your legs, you're going to kick him over and end up on top. Now by placing together the shrimp escape and either the sweep from the attempted straight arm bar or the scissor sweep, we can have drill number three. So for example, the shrimp escape. And the scissor sweep. And the same shrimp escape. But this time, with the sweep from the attempted straight arm bar. We can do this as many repetitions as we need to. Drill number three. If you were to get in a fight tonight, almost anywhere in the world, imagine what your opponent's plan would be to beat you. We can pretty much assume that his plan would be to strike you until you had received enough damage where you could not fight back effectively. We call this the universal fight plan because everybody's got it. You don't even really have to teach it to anybody. So the first thing we want to do is come up with a way to defeat that plan. We're going to do that by controlling the fight. We're going to control the fight by controlling the different aspects of stand-up fighting. Those aspects are range, which we'll get into in a minute, angle. For example, if Sergeant Bach was here, he has the angle on Sergeant Hill. And lastly, we have level, which we're not really going to get into in level one. So back to range. The ranges are first projectile weapon range, meaning you're far enough away where the only way they're going to hurt you is to shoot you or throw something at you. So projectile weapon range. As we come closer, we move into striking range. This is the range where you can reach each other if you were going to hit each other with either your fists or contact weapons or kicks. The next range beyond that is clinching range or grappling range, meaning you're too close to each other where it's no longer a game of striking but now a game of grappling. From a good fighting stance outside of striking range, when you either have A, the opportunity, or B, just the courage, you're going to close the distance. When you come in, keep your position tight and drive your forehead all the way into your opponent's chest. When you get there, your hands should rotate out over his biceps in what we call the King Louis position to control strikes. Now, once you're in this position, you're going to look away from the direction you want to go. You're going to trace your arm over his arm and suck his arm into your armpit. Now, many things are going on at once here, so he's going to let go of this arm so you can see what's happening on the backside. You're going to drive this elbow up underneath his arm as you step around beside him. Now that hand will come around his waist. So to see those things together, come on back. Driving in, hands go over the biceps in the King Louis position, reaching over the arm, stepping around and driving through. Hand on the hip, feet square, head nice and tight, nice stable position. From the clinch position, if you end up in front of your opponent, what you want to do at this time is release your grip of the hand that's around his arm and secure a grip with both palms facing down. You're going to step in front of him because the idea is to drive him just like you were tackling him. You're going to pull with your hands and push with your head so that you've broken his posture. Now the rest is all going to happen together, so he's going to hold on for a minute. You're going to release your grip because you don't want to fall on your hands with both of your weight. You're going to step your leg over the top of him, and you're going to push your hips forward to ride him down to the mounted position, so it'll be all together like this. <laughs> 